Hello and welcome to Tonic Studios, I'm Leo and I'm here today to show you how to assemble the vintage Vardo gift box. So the Vintage Vardo, I'm going to show you today step by step how to assemble the fairly basic gift box. So we're just going with your standard everyday uh, Vintage Vardo as Karen L uh, called them. Um, so we are filming this a little bit ahead of time, um, unfortunately I don't have the full die set yet but I do have the dies here that I can show you the pieces that I've cut them from. So we're going to start with the main bulk of the um, gift box, so the actual kind of caravan itself if you like. So for that I'm going to need three of these side panels here. I've got one roof panel and I've got two of the end panels as well. And with the end panel I have um, cut one with the detail in. So I've cut the outer edge first of all and then I've cut the detail in. And to go into that I've also then cut one of the door pieces which is down here. Um, and then I've layered that up just with the extra pattern. Like I said, we're going a little bit simple today, um, just so you can see how it goes together. But you can, of course, decorate this to your heart's content, and I'm sure you're going to really enjoy doing that as well. So along with those pieces then, I have also got a couple of the side panels, and again, I've already layered these up, put some little windows on, I've used the windows with the shutters for this one. So I've got two of those. I've got two of the balustrade pieces, and I have four of the steps. So with the balustrades, you do need one of each side. They are opposites, so you do need one of each. Here's your little step, you need four of those. I've also cut myself four of the wheels and I've layered those up as well. Um, like I said, I have got the roof, I've got my roof panel and I have cut two of the uh, decorative panel and layered those over as well. And then finally, I've cut two of this die down here. So You'll notice this has two parts, so you've got kind of a plain side and then you've got a piece that has these three little slits in it and that's going to be for building your staircase. So I'm going to start, like I said, with the main bulk of the gift box. I'm going to pop some of these pieces to one side. So the pieces that we are working with are these here. So my two ends, my three base and side panels and then the roof. So what we're going to do first, we're going to take a couple of glue tabs off these panels. So you can do this with a guillotine or a trimmer. I'm just going to use a pair of scissors. I'm just going to cut straight along the score line just on one of the long sides. So all the way along like that, just take off that one glue tab. And the same on a second of these panels. Again, just straight along that score line, nice and simple. That's that gone. So now I'm going to go in, I'm going to fold and burnish all of my score lines. We're making a, a gift box here, so I want to make sure that we've got nice crisp edges and everything is really well burnished. So for this, I'm just using the Precision um, Glide Folder. I find this is the nicest tool for doing this, you don't get any marks on your cardstock. And then same for your two side panels as well. Just fold them along your score lines. And then this one. So all of your glue tabs are on the base and the side panels. And then your roof and your end panels stick to that, basically. Okay. So let's get some gluing started. So this piece is going to be the base for my Vardo. These are going to be my sides. So where I've taken the glue tab off, they're going to stick onto the tab that is on the base. And I'm going to start by just putting glue along that tab. I find this nice and easy to do, just flat on the mat. It means you can get some good even pressure, line everything up. Get rid of any excess glue that you've got going on there. 
and make sure that it's nicely lined up. So your score lines here should line up perfectly. The sides should line up like so. Now we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So again, glue all the way along that glue tab. And put the other side panel on. So just again, making sure that you are using the edge where you've cut that glue tab off. So this is now the base and the two sides of your Vardo. I'm also going to add on the open end. So glue just along here. I'm going to pop that down. Again, make sure that you're lining that up. You should find that the points of this meet where your two lines are, your score lines down either side, press that in firmly, and then repeat this again for the back. So if I bring this down a bit so you can actually see, again I'm just making sure that where they meet here at the bottom they should be aligned with this score line, just like so. I'm going to, for just a moment, leave that to one side. I want to give my uh, glue time to dry a little bit and to grab. I'm going to take my roof panel. So what I have done is I've actually glued, like I said, my two decorative layers over the top. When you're doing this, you'll notice that you've got a set of notches. And you want them to be on the left and right hand side. So this is going to go over your Vardo in this direction. So it doesn't go that way. It goes this way with your notches facing towards the front and back, not side to side. And what I'm going to do is just literally run this over the edge of my glass mat. I just want to kind of encourage this to curve. You're kind of starting to break up some of the fibres in the cardstock. Because we've got that nice curved roof on the top of our vada, we want to make sure that we're kind of introducing that curve, hopefully you can see that there, into that roof panel nice and early on so it's not going to be as difficult for us to glue. So taking this then, I'm going to fold down all of these little glue tabs around the top of here. Now you've heard us say this a number of times, I'm sure that when we give you a rounded glue tab like this, you know that's going to basically form a curve somewhere. And you can see this has a lovely curve for that roof panel. So I'm going to pull up my side panels now. If you are going to put in the light, so while I'm holding this in place, hopefully you can see here I've got this little slit that the die cuts into this panel here. So if you want to put the lights in, what I would recommend that you do is poke them through and glue them into place before you glue this tab to the front because you can actually then hide your light tab in between there. Just helps to kind of uh, wedge it in place a little bit more for you. Gives it a little bit more stability. Okay, pull the other side up as well. Again, just making sure that your cut edge meets your score line. You can always run your finger along the edge if you're not quite sure if it's in the right place. As long as it's nice and smooth, you're all good. And I'm going to repeat that for the back as well. Or the front, whichever way around you want this to be. You can have a front door or a back door on your Vardo, whichever you prefer. So I've kept the back panel for this one. A little bit plainer, I've just added a little window on the back for decoration. Like I say, you could always cut the door into this if you wanted to. Or you could cut that decorative piece in and layer it up. Whatever you decide for your gift box. As I'm sure you saw with all of the samples that we had from our amazing design team, there are a lot of different options for how to decorate this and sort of put it all together. Okay, so again, I'm going to fold down all of these glue tabs along here. Well, be kind to your glue. I know we say this a lot. We really mean it, though. You do need to uh, give your glue time to grab. Don't go moving on too quickly, like we do. <laughs> okay, 
And there we go. That glue tab can go in there. So I'm going to start on the this end. So because this end is closed and obviously I can't get my hand in there to hold these glue tabs, I'm going to do it this way so that I can get under the roof before I glue it to the front because from here I can get inside if I need to. So with my roof panel, remember I said about these notches that are facing forwards and back for you. That is giving you a start and an end point. So you'll find that the notch should hit your uh, glue tab line or your score line so this score line along here for this glue tab that should be where your notch sits your roof is the same width as your house you're going right to the edge and I'm going to start roughly in the middle so I'm going to try and get my middle tab glued and held first and then go around from there that's the plan anyway we'll see what happens so I'm going to hold this. So because we've added that curve, we've kind of broken down those fibers. I'm going to hold it in my hand. I'm going to line up on that glue tab. Make sure that those notches are hitting the points they need to on either side. And once I know I'm in the right place, I can then press it onto that glue tab. And we just want it to grab slightly. And once you're happy, that you've got it, you can then go inside, pull the glue tab up if you need to, just to get that one tab anchored in. Once you've got the first one anchored in, it's then easy to go around and do the rest, but it's always a good idea whenever you're doing a curved edge like this, and be kind to your glue, um, whenever you're doing a curved edge, it's always good to get one of your glue tabs firmly anchored into place, and you're happy that it's in the right place, and then you can move on from there and kind of because you're almost pulling against it then, uh, that one tab that you've got sorted, it's going to be your anchor point for the rest of them. Okay. So, just going to hold this, what I've done, obviously you've got that score line on your glue tab so you can pull it back up again and just press and you want that one to be thoroughly glued in place before we move on. So I'm going to keep holding that. I'm going to put some glue on the rest of my tabs because I actually want that to start going a little bit tacky. As you know with our glue, once it has been on the cardstock for a little while, well, kind of, it dries off ever so slightly and you kind of get that quicker grab, if you like, once it is a bit more tacky. Okay. So now that I'm happy the middle one is caught, I can go on to the next one. And press that into place and then move on to the next one and just keep going around like that just pressing both sides and this is why like I say we do the closed side first because you've got the access inside and then we can do the open end second because you can still get your hand in the end if you need to. Okay, last couple of glue tabs just coming around here. So there we go, I've got that nice curve happening on the roof now. Next up then I'm going to put glue all the way along these long glue tabs on the side. Make sure you get right to the corners, that's very important to make sure that you hold everything in place and also this tiny little glue tab on the edge of here make sure that it's tucked under your side glue tab okay and once you're happy with that you can then stick that in place all the way along that side and again because this end is open I can now get my hand inside the gift box just to hold the other side of that glue tab and press it all into place using your notches front and back, just to make sure that you are aligning, that your roof is meeting. Okay, and then the same on the other side. So all the way along that long glue tab, glue right into the corners. You wanna make sure you use enough glue for it to grab nicely, but not so much that it's squeezing out of the edges if possible. And again, I'm gonna tuck that glue tab in underneath. And then make sure that my notch is meeting at the front. I'm going to get my hand just inside here. 
and press the glue tab along holding it in place onto my roof panel. Oh, a bit too much. Kind of got my hand stuck there, there we go. Okay, so my roof is now on, got a nice curve on the back. It is now anchored along both sides. So it's just a question now of getting these last tabs in. So we're gonna glue them all, bit of glue onto each one. And then we're going to pop these inside. Now I've used um, our classic 216 GSM cardstock for making this. As long as you are adding um, you know, your decorative layers, the lower weight cardstock will be absolutely fine. And especially for your roof panel, again, because it is that curved shape, we always recommend a lower GSM cardstock for that. Just to make it a little bit easier for you to manipulate it into place basically. Curve shapes are always much, much easier in that lower weight cardstock. Okay, so again, I'm just going to go around, hold all of those glue tabs in place. And they're all wanting to pop out today. I feel like I've glued this slightly too far down, possibly on one side, which is why it is going... So just take your time obviously you know we do this a lot quicker for you on camera you have uh, plenty of time in your craft room take your time make sure everything is lined up nice and neatly it's where it's meant to be be kind to your glue give it time to get a good grab don't move on too soon okay last couple of tabs i'm just going to put a tiny bit more glue on those last two. Okay, press that in. Sorry, I know I'm cutting this out. I'm trying to make sure I've got this held in place and it has firmly grabbed. Okay, there we go. I think that last one just grabs. So you can see I've now got my nice curve over here and the basis of my Vardo is done. So I'm going to put my door in, not next, because we need to get the stairs in first. So at this point you need to kind of have um, a decision made as to what you're putting on. If you're putting the stairs on and the door um, on the same place then you kind of need to make sure that you do that in the right order so you can get all of the glue tabs in together which is very important so I'm just going to leave that to one side again let my glue dry let's get some stairs built so like I said I have four of the steps I have the two sets of the slip pieces and the backing pieces and two of the balustrades as well so I'm going to start first of all by taking I need to remember which way around these go have a look at my balustrade, that'll help me. So this goes this way, so this is on this side, so this way around, okay. So your long glue tab on your step, you want to fold. So that's, um, I guess, what would it be called on your step? It's the riser, isn't it? The bit at the back of the step, like so. And I would recommend not folding your side glue tabs until you've actually put them through, um, just because they're a little bit stronger before you fold them on that score line. So we're going to poke them through that little slit, pop some glue underneath, fold it down and press that into place. Again, just hold that for a second, give your glue a second to dry. And then we're going to repeat that with two more of the steps. So again, poking that little tiny glue tab through the little slit that your die has cut for you. Here we go. Bit of glue underneath. And then fold along the score line, press it down into place. You can also um, leave them flat if you want, 
so you can poke them all through. Make sure that all of your risers are in the same direction as well, so don't accidentally put one in the wrong way around. There's that last one just going through. Bit of glue on the back and press that tab down Again, wiping off any excess glue as needs be. You are going to be covering this though, so not too much of an issue. Okay, so if you have done it like this, then you just need to bend them all down. And there is our steps for one side. So then I'm going to take the other piece that has the slits in, and I'm going to do exactly the same. Poke through my glue tab, through to the other side. Oh, there we go. And like I say, it is just that little bit easier when you um, haven't yet bent along that score line, the card just has that little bit more structure to it to be able to poke it through. And then the next one. Okay, there it goes. Um, so like I was saying, with the door and the stairs, if you are putting both in, you want to put the stairs into your Vardo first and then the door goes over the top. Um, you can also have the stairs on one side and just have the opening cut into the front and then have the door on the back if you wanted to do it that way. Um, you could have a closed back and just have the door with no stairs. However you want to build it, there's, a, like I say, so many different ways that you can do this. Depending on what you want to gift and how you want it to look once it is finished. If you want your gift to be a surprise, you're probably going to want to uh, close it in completely. You're not going to want to leave one end open. Okay, so my stairs are pretty much done. The last step is actually going to sit over the top. So fold down your glue tabs. And this is going to sit over the very top of those two little side panels, just like that. So you end up with four steps in total. So, a bit of glue on this side. Make sure that your step is lined up so it meets front and back. And then just press your glue tab down. And then the same on the other side. Now I have cut this again out of 216. Um, you could definitely do this in a much sturdier cardstock if you wanted to. So you could go to a 240 or even a 300 if you wanted to. Um, depending on you know, what you're going to be putting in here, how much it's going to be used. If it's just going to be a decorative item that is kind of seen but not played with, then a lighter weight cardstock would be fine. But if you're going to be using it or it's going to be out and people are going to be looking at it and touching it and taking it down, you may want to go for a little bit heavier weight just for the sort of strength and stability. Okay, so now that I have that glued in place, not very well apparently, let me just, that one has slipped drastically. I'm not quite sure how that happened either. Okay, there we go. Now that we have that glued in place, what we're going to do, this last riser, the one at the top, this is going to become the hinge for our stairs. So I'm going to put some glue underneath, oh, no I'm not. I'm going to glue this back onto the top where I peeled it off. Bear with me just for a second. There we go. That's better. Again, be kind to your glue. All of those things that we say and we never actually do. For this one it is quite important though because this is going to hold the entire little staircase so I'm going to put this to one side, I'm going to let that dry before I try and manipulate it anymore. Let's get the side panels on and our other decorative pieces. So one thing you can do, if you wanted to put these pieces under your roof, you could stick these on before you put the roof on. Um, they can also go at the bottom and that's what I'm going to do for this one. So I'm going to fold them along the score line. If you're putting them under the edge of the roof, under here, you stick them so that they. this is basically a glue tab under the roof. And then if you're sticking them to the bottom of your Vardo, 
you can just fold this and then glue it all the way underneath. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean now. So it's just going to glue right along the edge of your gift box, just like this. And then I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So I'm just folding all the way along that score line. Sounds like they are dragging containers around outside today. Apologies if you can hear any of that. Okay, second side power just going on there. Press it all the way along, make sure it's all made contact so that your glue can grab. And then your side panels literally just stick onto the side of your gift box like that. So you can leave it like this if you don't want to put the side panels on. You could just decorate this panel. You could put some windows onto here and whatever else you might want. I'm going to run some glue down either side. And then on this part, I'm just going to run some glue across the top and across this bottom section here. And across the middle, obviously. I don't know why I was putting my glue bottle down there. Okay, so under the edge of the roof, and your decorative panel should meet the bottom of your gift box. Just like that, and then this part should line up with the front and the back. Again, because I've got this nice open end, I can just go in there, press from the inside. I'm going to pull my shutters up a little bit just so you can see those. So I've got the little shutter windows on there. And while we're on this side, let's get our wheels stuck on as well. Put a bit of glue just in there, and then a bit of glue just across the top of the wheel. And just press that into place. And the same again, so a bit of glue in the middle. And then just across the top of that wheel. Pressing that just onto the side of there. If you want to, you can go inside, just so you can press against your hand there. Okay, so that's one side done. I'm going to flip this over and repeat that again on this side. So a bit of glue down either side. And then on here, I'm going to put some glue across the top and across the bottom. And then across the center. Slide that up under the roof. And make sure we are meeting front and back. Go in, press that on from the inside, making sure that it has all nicely glued into there. Just pull up those shutters again. And then two more wheels to go on this side. So a bit of glue in the middle of both. A bit of glue across the top and press those into place. And the same with this one. A bit of glue across the top. So the reason I got the wheels on first before I finish the stairs is just because you need it to actually lift the box up off the surface because otherwise if you tried to stand this up with the stairs in place you would end up mashing your stairs slightly. So there we go. The base of my Vardo is coming together nicely. Let's get our staircase into place. So I'm going to put on, we've got these two panels that kind of cover your sides and these are going to sandwich those glue tabs which helps to make it nice and sturdy and keeps your glue tabs firmly locked in for the stair pieces. So definitely not going anywhere. 
and they just fit right over the top. And if you want to, um, this is where you could start bringing in a second colour because these are going to then sit behind your balustrade piece. And as you can see in there, you've got those little, so you've got the hearts and the little like broderie on glaze piece in there. So if you wanted a different colour coming through, you could cut this panel again in a different colour. Um, you can paper piece back into it if you are so inclined. Again, whatever you see fit for your own little Vardo. And we'll glue on the other side. And again, I'm going to sandwich those glue tabs into there. Just bear in mind if you are cutting um, a second one of these in a different colour of cardstock, and you are seeing the underside this time, well you're not going to see it because it is going to be behind your balustrade, but you do need to bear in mind that if you are cutting that, say from um, a satin miracard or a miracard or something like that, you're going to need to reverse cut it, so you need to put your die on the back side of your cardstock to cut it, so that when it is finished being die cut, and you flip it around, you've got the correct side showing. Just something to bear in mind. Okay, then I'm going to get my balustrade pieces over the top. So this time I'm going to put some glue around the edge of here because I don't want it coming through my pattern. So a little bit just at the top, down the edges. And then press that into the side. So I've gone with a uh, classic craft room colour scheme for this one. I've got some Peer View and a Teal Blue Classic card. And then we've got some, I, to, I can never remember, I think it's Cosmic Cosmic Copper, a Perlison card, and then a bit of Glazed Chestnut as well. Okay, finish that one. And I can get this onto the other side. Oh, that is all firmly in place and again this is also adding that little bit more structure and stability to your little staircase as well okay I'm going to pull all of these tabs down so just fold them along the score line make sure they're tucked neatly out of the way and then for the top one I'm going to put some glue underneath again making sure you get right to the corners you might find this easier just to tilt your Vardo back to get this in and then you're going to want to press your glue tab on the inside so just inside of here so the very first step the one that we put right at the very top the back glue tab what I've called the riser is basically going inside the opening make sure you press that in firmly Make sure you've got it just along where that score line is. You don't want it to be in the wrong place. You want to make sure this staircase can move freely because if you do want to tuck it back inside, this is the uh, score line that's going to allow you to do that. So make sure that it is clean and out of the way. Once you're happy that that has grabbed, then we can stand that up and you can now see, hopefully you can see from here, I've now got my little staircase at the front as well. So the last thing then, if you are putting the door in as well, we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing. We've got a little glue tab at the bottom. So we're going to put glue onto the front of the glue tab this time. And then we're going to tuck it into exactly that same place, which is why I said it's important to get your stairs in first. So line up the door. And then press your glue tab into place. And this is where it's going to be very important to be kind to your glue. Give it enough time to actually grab. So just hold that in place. So yeah, just pressing right the way across that glue tab. Make sure it is firmly bonded on there. And then that's going to form your door. So what you'll notice is that these two holes just in here will line up with two of holes in the pattern on that front panel so you can put some ribbon or some twine through there and tie that into a bow so that's then going to allow your door to fold open and closed on the front of your vado 
So that is my fairly quick and uh, hopefully simple guide on how to construct your vintage Vardo. We can't wait to see all of the amazing projects that you make with this dice set. So don't forget to tag us in your makes, uh, post them onto our official Tonic Studios Facebook group. Um, you'll find the link for that in the description below the video. Um, or we are across social media, we are at Tonic Studios pretty much everywhere. And you can use the hashtag ShowTonic to show us what you've been making. This set is available for you now on our website, so that is either on the UK or the US website. You can go and grab that for yourself. And the lovely little festive set as well, if you wanted to make yourself a little Christmas Vardo, and they look stunning. I really enjoyed playing with that, so I'm sure you're going to as well. Don't forget, if you are a Tonic Craft Kit subscriber, you do get that additional 10% discount across everything on our website. You don't have to do anything, just as long as you are logged in while you're shopping, that will be applied automatically for you at checkout. It's an amazing piece of internet magic and we absolutely love it. So thank you very much to Cameron for sorting that out for us. And you can, of course, pay in installments on our websites using ShopPay, ClearPay or PayPal. Have a look at checkout, which one is available for you and which one's gonna work best this time around. Thank you very much for joining me today and we'll see you all again very soon. Happy crafting.